Welcome back. A convicted wife beater and murderer is currently fighting a legal battle, which if he's successful, would mean that his ex-wife, who he beat to a pulp, would be forced to take their five-year-old son to visit him in prison. And guess who's picking up the tab for James McNamara's legal costs? Yes, you've got it, the taxpayer, because McNamara is entitled to legal aid. Now, legal expert Dr. Sean Gabb is now calling for the whole system to be scrapped. He says the American way, no win, no fee system, is much more cost-effective. But supporters of the legal aid say it's essential that every citizen has access to justice. Dr. Gabb joins us now, along with the director of the Legal Action Group, Alison Hanna. Welcome to you both. First of all, Dr. Gabb, we've had legal aid for over half a century now. Um, it's, a, it's a fair and democratic way to do things. Why do you want it scrapped? I would abolish it. Um, however, you need to look at it as part of an integrated solution. It is, it's a bit like asking the advocate of railway uh, privatization, would you believe in leaving everything else unchanged but privatizing the signal boxes? It wouldn't necessarily work. The problem at the moment in this country is that we have too many bad laws, we have too many causes of groundless action, and the procedure um, for law cases is far too complex. We need to cut back on the number of laws, we need to cut back on the number of groundless causes of action, things like product safety, um, discrimination, um, things like that. But do you agree with the principle of it? The principle is that everyone is, is entitled to justice. Oh, everyone is entitled to justice. The question is, how do you get it? And I don't mm -hmm. think legal aid does that. Mm -hmm. As far as I can tell, huge amounts of legal aid money are soaked up in things like... Uh, well, tort actions against uh, Tony Martin, mm. um, asylum seekers demanding bigger houses. So all what, what would you like things. to see instead? I would like to see a very much simplified form of civil justice in which many cases, instead of going to 10-month law uh, trials, uh, could be sorted out by arbitrators. I would also like to see a no-win, no-fee um, arrangement more extensively used in this country. Okay. Uh, now, Alison, you know, you've heard that, the American system, no win, no fee. What's wrong with that? Well, I think the no win, no fee uh, ag agreement is a very attractive one, and it certainly uh, is designed to improve access to justice for people, but it does only apply to money claims. It's not uh, a principle you can use if you've got, say, a housing claim or um, uh, a claim where the remedy is not one of, for a sum of money. Mm. So it would only address some of the... Uh, issues by uh, converting to a no win no fee and in fact almost all money claims are now uh, no win no fee arrangements. But can you understand people's frustration the, this, you know, the story today uh, the weekend about James McNamara this, this man is, is a murderer he, he used to beat his wife up and yet he's using the system we have to pay for him to get the son that he terrorized and the wife he used to beat to go and see him in prison why, do, why should we pay for that tell me why well, I think, I think the facts of the case do sound very strange. Uh, I mean, I don't know about the particular circumstances or on what basis he, he got legal aid. Mm. Uh, it certainly is true that from time to time you come across cases mm. that sound very strange indeed. Mm. Um, but I don't know what the argument was. All I can well, say... Let me give you another very good example. Mm. Is, is Brendan Fearon, um, you know, the, the man who, who burglarised Tony Martin, mm. was going to try and sue... Tony Martin, the man whose house he burgled. Now that, you know, you can, people are at home thinking, what is going on? This isn't justice. This has nothing to do with justice. Well, I agree that there are these strange cases from time to time. I think we probably hear about the ones that are the exceptions, not the rule. What I can say is that if you apply for legal aid, you have to both satisfy the Legal Services Commission that you have the merits to bring a case, and you also have the means to qualify on financial grounds. How, would, the, how would that organisation, though, uh, look at the merits of Dennis Nielsen, the mass murderer who killed 15 people, who just very recently applied for the... He, he actually sued David Blunkett. He took him to court because um, he wanted the right... He wanted to have the right to read gay porn in prison. And when he was told he couldn't, he sued David Blunkett, and he used legal aid to do it. I mean, how can that be a case that's judged on merit? I have no idea on what basis the, the Commission made the decision. I mean, I can't say on the individual case why they got away with it. Uh, but it I mean, never mind, in, a, in a particular case, the principle of those kind of cases, you must actually think it's ludicrous. Well, on the principle, you have to say what the basis of your claim is, and you normally have to satisfy them that you have a reasonable claim and, and a reasonable chance of winning that claim. But why it is 
that in these particular cases they got legal aid. I honestly can't say. I can't speak for the Commission. Mm -hmm. I don't know on what basis the case was put to them. But I agree that there are cases which seem unjust in the sense that mm -hmm. people read about them and think, well, mm -hmm. I don't know why that got legal mm -hmm. aid. Mm -hmm. um, and they do crop up from time to time. I'm not sure there's more now than there used to be. In fact, I would be quite surprised if there were because the system has got a lot tighter over the last five years, say. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gavin, yeah. just to answer the further. Alison has said it's just a few cases. So why would we scrap a system on just a few cases? I'm not suggesting the system should be scrapped because it throws up a few odd cases. I'm suggesting it should be scrapped because I don't see why the taxpayers should fund private litigation. Um, I do believe in fair and equal access to law, but I don't see why that needs to be secured by making the taxpayer fund private litigation. Um, as I said, we need to cut back on the number of causes of frivolous action. Um, we also need to simplify legal procedure. When that has happened, it will be much easier for ordinary people to get their cases into court. Um, at the moment, what we have is a system which does throw up a disturbing number of odd cases, and which also seems to enrich a small number of metropolitan lawyers. Mm. I, I'm not sure <coughs> that um, legal aid actually does secure equal access to justice for the great majority of the population. As far as I can tell, the middle classes are too rich to, to, uh, to, to qualify for legal aid and too poor to hire the kind of lawyers who would secure them justice. And, and so the system as a whole is not working. As I said, you can't abolish legal aid in a vacuum. Okay. But as part of an integrated solution, I think it is necessary. Alison, do you think it's working? I think on the whole, yes, it is working. I think that um, it is an access to justice issue. We live in a society where people have rights under the law, and those rights are meaningless if they're not able to go to court to enforce them. Okay. I agree the law should be simplified and procedures should be simplified, okay. but at the end of the day, people ought to be able to go to court, even if they can't afford to pay privately okay. for a lawyer. Thank you both very much for coming. Okay, now.